Okay, so in this problem, we're going to look at another example of scattering. Uh, so this time, what we're so again we're working in the scalar Yukawa theory where our interaction Hamiltonian is this, and this is our Taylor expanded interaction matrix. And so before in the in the first example I did, we worked with this term because it is the lowest order non-vanishing term, or it was for that uh, process. Um, but the problem that we're going to do now involves scattering of 2b particles. So the initial state has 2b particles of momenta p1 and p2, and the final state has 2p particles of momenta p1 prime and p2 prime. And what we can notice here is that in order to get from this state to this state, we would need two side daggers and two sides to operate. Because we want to basically destroy these two B particles and then create two more B particles. And since this operator only inver it only involves one uh, you know, copy of this interaction Hamiltonian that only involves one side dagger and one side, there's no way for this term to contribute to this process. So the lowest order non-vanishing term will be this one. So we need to calculate this uh, so I said before that, you know, written in this form, it is time-ordered because of the way the bounds are written. And I said that that's not actually how you practically take care of evaluating this term. So uh, in the first example, we saw that uh, basically all, um, because the Hamiltonian, the interaction part looks like this, it's integral over space. We just have this integral over time here, so uh, we ended up working with an interaction of uh, an integral over space time. And so similarly, we have two integrals here, so we're going to have a double integral over space time. And we're not going to worry about the bounds. We still have to, so we still have to worry about time ordering our operators. So really, this term is becomes this in this uh, theory. So um, this looks bad because, you know, we, I showed last video um, Wick's theorem for, you know, four operators, you get a whole bunch of terms. And now we have six operators here. And that looks, you know, there's even more terms, so it's not good. Uh, but we can write out a few, you know, there, so the first term is always the easiest. We just normal order all these things. And I'm writing, um, instead of psi of x1 and phi of x1, I just write psi1 and phi1 and things like that, because it's just easier for me to write. Let's see, the first term will just be normal ordered. And then we can start working through uh, terms involving one uh, pair of contracted fields. So, you know, at first glance, it seems like, well, for each field, I can contract with each of the other five fields. But all three of these operators are evaluated at the same time, and all three of these operators are evaluated at the same time. So if I contract two operators evaluated at the same time, um, well, you get zero. So I don't have to worry about those terms. So I only have to worry about contracting for example, this guy with each of these three, and this guy with each of these three, this guy with each of these three. So there's going to be nine terms involving one pair of contractions. Uh, there will also be terms involving double contractions and even triple contractions. But we can look at, again, if we look at our initial and final states, what we need our operators to do is destroy 2b particles and then create 2b particles. So I need terms that involve two psi daggers and two psi's. And um, so I need at least four operators acting. So again, if I have, if I double contract, if I contract two pairs of operators, that will only leave two operators left to act. 
So there's no way to get from this state to this state with those terms. So I can throw away the doubly contracted terms. And similarly, the uh, triply contracted terms will also not contribute to this process. So I only need to worry about um, the, the terms with single contractions. Uh, and it's not too hard to convince yourself that out of those nine terms, the only one that will contribute is the term that looks like this, where I contract phi1 and phi2, and that leaves left over psi1 uh, dagger, psi1, psi2 dagger, and psi2. So now I have what I want. I have a psi that can destroy a B particle, then I can create another one, destroy one, create another one. So I end up with two particles, two B particles, if I start with two B particles. So this is the term that we're going to need to calculate with. And um, yeah, so we can just write out, basically uh, plugging in this expression for here and um, computing you know, this amplitude, writing out this interaction thing, matrix element, whatever you want to call it, we get this. So uh, what we'll need to evaluate is basically this, uh, this thing, this inner product. So I'm getting, my voice is getting kind of tired, I think. Um, we'll work through how to actually evaluate this thing in the next video.